Today we are going to talk about distal uh, pancreatectomy with splenectomy, distal pancreatectomy with splenic preservation, and a commonly asked complication after the operation, which is a, a pancreatic uh, fistula or an abscess that can happen after the operation. So the steps for a distal panc with splenectomy would be, I would enter the abdomen in a safe fashion, enter the lesser sac, identify the pancreas, then make a tunnel underneath the neck of the pancreas, and that would be where my staple line would be for transaction of the pancreas. I would try to then also identify the splenic artery and the splenic vein, and then uh, ligate the splenic artery and the splenic vein. Then I will lift the whole specimen and block from the retroperitoneum towards the spleen, and then separate the spleen from its attachment. Now this is the distal pank with splenectomy. In distal pancreatectomy with splenic preservation, the steps are, I would enter the abdomen in a safe fashion, enter the lesser sac, identify the pancreas and the lesion, make a tunnel underneath the neck, that would be where I would transect the pancreas. That's usually because that's the most uh, thin portion of the pancreas and easily transectable. In this case, I would identify each and every branch uh, of the splenic artery that goes into the pancreas and the draining veins that drain into the splenic veins so that I can uh, ligate the branches and the tributaries and preserve the splenic artery and the splenic vein, then lift off the pancreas of the retroperitoneum and then uh, perform a dissection on the splenic hilum without injuring the vessels and uh, that will lead to uh, splenic uh, preservation and I would send the specimen as an end block. Now the other technique that can be employed is a Warshaw technique. In this case, if the, for example, the tumor is involving the blood vessels, the splenic artery, the splenic vein, and you think you need to transect them, you can transect them. So it's basically the same steps of uh, the uh, procedure, which is the distal pank with splenectomy that I had mentioned before. In this case, however, you make sure you do not injure the uh, short uh, gastrics because the spleen gets its blood supply from the short gastrics. A common complication that can occur is um, post pancreatectomy um, abscess or fistula. Uh, you have discharged this patient, uh, there was no drain, and now he's oh, having left upper quadrant pain. Uh, you drain that fluid, the drain amylase come back as a very elevated. Um, so uh, this patient, once you have drained, can be managed uh, appropriately based on how the patient is doing clinically. There is no indication to keep the patient in-house. If the patient is doing well, he or she can be on a diet and can be discharged safely with a drain. The question arises, if this uh, fistula is persistent, then you would want to do an ERCP to evaluate the remnant pancreas and the pancreatic duct to ensure that there is no stone, no stricture, and the ampulla is uh, working and is not strictured or narrowed or it does not have any problem, uh, which is uh, resulting in the opening uh, at the transected pancreas uh, leaking the pancreatic fluid. When you're doing the distal pank with splenectomy, ensure uh, that uh, the patient gets the vaccines, which are the meningococcal, pneumococcal, and H influenza vaccines uh, prior to discharge if the patient has not received them uh, before uh, the patient was scheduled uh, to get this operation done. Thank you.